Second. I'd like to call this meeting to order on December 6th. <coughs> there may be some evidence on the table of the meeting's been delayed because we had a, a recognition and thanks cake for soon retiring trustee Mark Crockett. But call the meeting to order and we begin with minutes. I would entertain a motion to adopt minutes of November 15. So moved. I hear a second. Yeah. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? I have one slight change. Last, last page, almost the last, last, almost the last line, just before adjournment, it says resolution, blah, blah, blah. Motion carried, Mr. Meach, record the request for use of state route 343. It's a portion of state route 343, the portion okay. from route 68 to, to uh, uh, state route 370. Yeah. So you want to say more than a portion of, you want to specify the section or? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and what did you say quickly? You said it went fast. From uh, US Route 68 to uh, US Route 370. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, I would make a change at the bottom of page two in the uh, YSDC report. Hollister reported that the corporation returned rather than withdrew. Okay. Anything else? Take the minutes as amended. Could we have a roll call? Mr. Crockett? <coughs> yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mucher? Yes. Thank you. And we have minutes of special meeting on November 24th. So moved. I'll second. Uh, let me just read it, it's so, it's so brief. Uh, call to order, special meeting was called to order at 4.40 p.m. by Chairperson Hollister, Trustee Moocher, and Fiscal Officer Silliman were also present. A motion by Moocher and seconded by Hollister was made to adopt Resolution 2021-46, Amendment of Permanent Appropriations. Motion carried unanimously. Uh, a motion by Mr. Moocher and seconded by Mr. Hollister was made to adopt Resolution 2021-47, Request for No Engine Brake Signage on State Route 343. Motion carried unanimously. A motion by Mr. Moocher and seconded by Mr. Hollister was made to adopt res Resolution 2021-48, Transfer of Funds. Motion carried unanimously. And we adjourned at 4.55. Any discussion? No. We call the roll, please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mucher? Yes. Mark wasn't um, present, so he abstains. I actually didn't hear what you said, Chris. Yes. I said yes. Okay. I assumed that, but I just thought it might be. <clears throat> Motion to approve payment of bills. And what is the total amount? It's not here on Good the question. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a, a lot. lot. <laughs> <laughs> and general fund, $8,482.68. Fire fund, $43,072.04. Cemetery Fund, $7,264.55. EMS Billing, $4,202.36. Road and Bridge Fund, 
$5,686.23. I entertain a motion to approve those. Mark, do you want to move for that one? You want the honor of making that motion? Yeah, I'll make that motion. I'll second. And I will second it. Any discussion? All right. Call the roll, please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. My, my quick figure, um, calculation on my phone, but I can't cut up to my figure, fingers all the time. $68,707.86. Before going on with correspondence, I just normally acknowledge who's here. Uh, would our guests please introduce themselves? Carol Simmons, Yellow Springs News. Terry White, Physicians for Green Acres. Jennifer Rimes, the Plain Teacher. Jim Redley, Resident. Kel Walter, Resident. Are there any items of business that you'd like to add to the agenda? Comments you might want to make later? We would um, we'd like to discuss um, on Fairfield Pipe coming into the village if the township would be willing to put up um, a speed limit sign well before um, cars approach the village, which is 25 miles per hour, because we are currently working with the village to put up a stop sign at King and Fairfield Pipe because the speeding there is just over the top. So we well, thought it might assist. What I'd like to do is. Oh, sorry. Ask you whether. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <clears throat> no, we we can shift things around and proceed with that item of business right after correspondence, or we can put it after other reports, depending on whether or not you want to be here for all the excitement. Could I make a suggestion? Yes, suggestion. Um, that portion of Fairfield Pike is, is not under the jurisdiction of Miami Township. That would be the jurisdiction of Greene County. You would need to contact the Green County engineer and make the same request. Interesting. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, because we were told by the village just the opposite that it was under township jurisdiction. Uh, I've been told that for years. You, you want to repeat the area that you're, the beginning? The beginning of um, uh, what is that? Uh, East Enon um, and coming approaching the village from that point on. Mm -hmm. So between East Enon heading east. To yes. the village. So that's not township at all. Hmm. No. Well, it, it's it's in Miami Township, but the road is not a township. Fair enough. Yeah. 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 Understood. Is the same thing true for Polcott south of? Uh, sorry, north of town. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, that's helpful. We'll Thank you. Head, we'll mark <laughs> up a different tree. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. just for what it's worth, those are the only two places that come into town. Where the speed limit is not graduated, it goes from 50 miles an hour in both places to 25. And the data from, I just had the data from Fairfield Pike. Um, speed's approaching 100 miles an hour on Fairfield Pike, which is a 25 mile an hour zone. What? Yeah. That's crazy. So thank you. Yeah, but thank you. We, <laughs> we have an exciting meeting that'll run another 40 minutes or so. <laughs> Actually, let me look at the agenda before you get Oh, yeah. yeah. But thank you. The engineer's name is Stephanie Gaw. Okay. She's very uh, approachable. Right. Thank you. Donna, I do have one thing I'd like to talk about. I'd like to just talk about the resolution you guys did on November 15th regarding the Kingwood Project. Okay, do we right. make that an old business item? Mm -hmm. Sure. Correspondence received. MVRPC. 2050 Long Range Transportation Plan. Uh, and then a few other items that have to do with MVRTC. Updates on Township Stimulus Program application. Want to flag anything that you 
think ought to be an agenda item. Oh, well, we, yeah, we'll we'll need to speak about that under uh, roads, cemeteries, cemeteries, I guess. Email from ODOT requesting a time to install the 45 mile per hour signage. I guess we'll speak to that. But, uh, uh, Green County. Township Association November meeting minutes. Appreciation to Mr. Gokenauer for installing veterans medallion for Marsha and Cornelius Williams. Uh, Very good job. Uh, we can repeat that during, uh, <laughs> during your report. Otarma acknowledged receipt of renewal questionnaire. It was an invitation to the annual Township Association. Christmas party, Dayton Development Coalition annual meeting announcement, Green County Public Health receipt of traffic safety grant for 2022, tornado risk report. I think that's from you. No. Did I? Who's it from? Somebody made a report. It was, I thought it was from the Green. I thought it was terrifying. Oh, well, it, I, it could be. You forwarded it to Some, Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, you're very modest. <laughs> Emails from Attorney Sloan uh, regarding uh, Kingwood. Just update. Uh, email regarding uh, the rebuild of the F450 for the road department. I missed that. So I'll ask during the we can speak of that during the road. Uh, PUD draft proposed changes. Green County Public Health December 6th meeting announcement. And then fund status reports that we just received. <clears throat> so from those in, from that list, what do we want to add to old and new business? Dates on township stimulus program? That's under cemetery. Okay, not necessarily old business. But email from ODOT would be road. I don't think there was anything, at, well, we can add the appreciation, we can repeat under road. Yeah, 450 rebuild. It's actually a replacement. We could do that on the road. PUD draft proposed changes under uh, zoning. Okay. <clears throat> Today's celebrity chief, Colin Altman. You make a fire department report. I would love to. And, and why were you late for the meeting? <laughs> <laughs> I was at the state house with the governor and his entourage. His entourage. I was going to say his own dog too, John Houston. But <laughs> First time I met him. John Houston. That's what I thought it would be. It's a cute little dog. All right. <coughs> Since the last meeting, there have been 40 EMS calls, uh, four of which were in Bath Township, nine fire incidents, two of which were in Bath. Uh, <coughs> oh, well, we actually want to say thank you to Dan. He got our sign up outside for authorized vehicles only. So thank you. And light bulb still works, so everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our holiday party award ceremony will be Sunday, December 19th. Uh, you're all invited. And, and there's anybody. So there, <laughs> you can see what it is. It's the Yellow Springs Brewery this year. Yeah. It's, uh, the, the south side. The south one, yes. Mm -hmm. The Barrel House <clears throat> with a food truck from the Georgia. Um, it's a more budget friendly event. Please mark the calendars now. Uh, and then, I think I'm going to do this work on the executive session. Um, <coughs> there is a recommendation uh, in your packet of uh, who to hire for the career lieutenant position. Um, it'll just be conditional because they have to go through a physical and drug screen and actually have to negotiate salary on. So, 
are you asking to go into an executive session? Uh, we probably should do that in the executive session, I understand, right? For the hiring, firing, discipline, termination, et cetera, personnel. I would entertain a motion to go into an executive session. Couldn't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I hear a sorry. yes. yes. <laughs> or a, I hear a motion. Wait here a second. Second. It has been moved and seconded to go into executive session. Please call the roll. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Yeah. Okay, this won't be long. Okay. Well, executive <laughs> session. Oh, I see. Okay. We should have some Yeah. I'd like to move that. Uh, the board of trustees authorizes Chief Allman to extend a conditional employment contract to a, um, a qualified applicant for the position of um, lieutenant paramedic. Yeah, career chef lieutenant is the technical. Mm. I'm not sure the job title will show up on the video. It would be audible. Would you repeat the title for the job? Uh, uh, the title is uh, Career Shift Lieutenant. So it's been moved. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. Moved and seconded to <clears throat> make a conditional offer. Yep. And with the plan being that the next board meeting will have a resolution to hire someone. I hope so. Call the roll, please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Oh, other fire. Right, sorry. <laughs> oh. uh, no. That's, that's us. We, there was a, what was I saying? Um, just for background, would you repeat what, what happened? We had a couple uh, long-time employees move on to Oh, well, yeah, I mean, this position is filling. We had a longtime employee who was, um, the term that we're using the fire service now because it's a prevalent issue. It's uh, snatched from us by another township in Green County that's significantly larger and was able to um, pay him 50% uh, additional uh, increase on what he was making here um, and did a full lateral transfer so they would take his uh, sick and accumulated sick and vacation time. So uh, we've been hunting for someone. Um, the board graciously understood the need to increase our base salary for the position. So uh, we did that and uh, received, um, sent out 10 applications and received three, unfortunately, which is uh, not as big a pool as we would have liked, but is also another issue going on currently in fire and police is that jobs that used to get Hundreds of applicants don't get that anymore. So, uh, so yeah. Hopefully, after an inter inter interview process and background checks, uh, this gentleman will pass his uh, pre-employment stuff, and then we'll be able to offer him a position for the next year. Hope so. And then he'll work a 24/48 shift opposite the other two people leading the shift. So. Thank you. You're welcome. You won't have to fill that shift yourself anymore. <laughs> Correct, and hopefully it should cut down on the amount of overtime we've been paying out to people to cover the shift. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully. Okay, sure. <laughs> well, well, that's one of them we use. <laughs> the other one we let's, so shall we move on, or are there other... I'm fire? done. I'm done. I'm done with you people. <laughs> I have some other fire. Okay. Uh, issues, if I might. Um, I think we thought when we built this garage mahal as it's referred to in various places around gotcha. um, that we would the lights in the bay i'm not sure about the daytime but i thought they were off at night except for the red you and me both uh, <laughs> if you haven't seen our electric bill lately it is somewhere in the neighborhood of horrendous and I've seen uh, it's running. I'm sure you've seen it, but it, it's running over twice 
Yeah, I mean, the guys are supposed to turn the bay lights off in the evening, uh, primarily because it also blinds the neighbors across the street. Um, and then just the, uh, the bay is just illuminated on the red, mm -hmm. the red stoplights. Mm -hmm. And then when the call comes in, the red alert lights come on. Mm -hmm. um, I will make sure they continue doing that. But I, I, mean, I can't imagine that's the only thing that's driving an electric car. Well, I know, but it's... Oh, but yeah. It, it, well, oh, since everything so it's not on a timer. Somebody has to no, do it. someone actually has to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I thought during all our pre-discussions and stuff that at a certain time of night, because there's a timer in the room mm -hmm. with the red light control, mm -hmm. that it would go to the reds, and then when the lights came on, they come on a little bit for a call. Mm -hmm. that's, not, that's not the case. And Dan Montgomery seemed to feel that that wasn't what we ended up with, mm -hmm. I mean, which is clear. Because mm -hmm. I spoke with him and whichever contracts, Schaefer or whoever mm -hmm. was, who was in charge of that stuff. Um, and it's primarily just because we didn't have all the infrastructure in place for the alerting system. So we just have certain red lights and they come on in the bases. I will reiterate to the guys to make sure that they turn those off and have a, okay. And there's the one bay where the lights turn themselves on. Seriously, apparently in the middle of the night, but we're working on that. <laughs> it, it occurs to me that it's not just an energy issue, it's also you don't want to have be leaving an extremely brightly lit space and driving off into the dark. You oh, can't, right. You yeah. can't see very well. Well, I mean, uh, I mean, once a call comes in, red lights come on throughout. There in the bunk rooms. Yeah, the that's center. the red, not red, not white for that yeah. reason. Hmm. Okay, staying with utilities, our favorite utility discussion. Uh, do you have an update at all on the on the water issue from the? The last thing I got from Johnny was that they were on it. Yeah, so I don't know what that meant. I don't know if we have seen anything in the water bill. Well, I, I actually got the water bill the other day. And for some reason, it comes in my name. I'm going to have to take that out of my name. <laughs> because it's, it's a fairly good size of bill. Um, but anyway, uh, there was no adjustment at all. Okay. And I immediately put it back in the mail, or I put it back in their little box and said, uh, please credit the, the duck meter or yeah, he, such and such. Well, I, he, I, oh, I had a conversation with the utility office. Ooh, cool. And because um, I was realized that it was the address on <clears throat> our bills was still going to 225 Quarry Street. <laughs> so I thought, well, you should fix that since that's a year old. Anyway, and she said, then she told me that someone had picked up the bill and said it's, there's no deduct on there. And she said actually that it is $2,000. Uh, 2,000 gallons was taken off that total. For one month? I, I, she just said that it had been adjusted and uh -huh. that, that um, it was 2,000 gallons less than what the meter had read. Well, so I, I that, yeah, it seems like the, the problem was going on for more than one month. So yeah, for a whole year. So I don't. I would guess that two thousand gallons isn't covering the whole year. I'm guessing, but I don't know. I knew that they did. Oh, there was an adjustment. They yeah, haven't done the retroactive. They may be figuring two thousand is how much they need to take off each month. But they haven't done the previous. And amount. I guess she said the bills wait here for somebody to come pick it up. And I realized that at about four forty-five today. Well, probably Chris Major. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I didn't pay it because I didn't get it. So. Anyway, so it's still there. Uh -huh. I'll go get it now. <laughs> See ya. So issue pending. Well, um, I can ask them when I pick it up. Is this a one-time deal mm -hmm. or is this going to happen? I ask. Okay. I mean, I, well, it's not a one-time deal. Right. I thought it was going to be retroactive because it should have been in place from November Twelve 18th months ago. of last year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll try and get more information and see. Okay. From my limited experience, the people in the billing office have no control over okay. these things. They're not the people yeah, I don't think to. this is appropriate discussion right yeah. now. Well, should have been handled months and months and months ago through the utility manager, whatever it is. John? Utility, yeah. <laughs> he is. I'll get in touch with him again and see if he knows anything about retroactive billing or unbilling. I don't know. <laughs> Crediting. That's Credit. the word. Yes. Have the uh, fire alarms stayed low at Antioch? Yes. 
Good. Yeah, and that one I will credit both some students and the president. Mm -hmm. Crack it up. Very good. Yeah, so is I. <laughs> so are the guys. That's all I had to close the fire. Okay. Shall we go on? <coughs> yes. A cemetery report? Yes, sir. Well, since our last meeting, we've had no burial. And they plenty of time to work on the column burying areas. Try to get you dressed up. So take a shape, that If anybody hasn't seen it, then I encourage them to go down and look at the work that uh, our township designer and his hired hand have, have done. Still need, to put some, still need to put some topsoil and mm -hmm. some grass seed in. It's all wet right now. Yesterday it was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, after last night. So maybe later in the week. Okay. Going back up to 60 eventually. Yeah, sometime. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I had a phone call Saturday about a natural burial, but there's a couple of questionable things when I spoke to this lady. She's in Cleveland. She says on our website, says that they can bury in a mushroom suit. Is there anything on our website? I told her I didn't think so. She said there was. What's a mushroom suit? Mushrooms grow out of it. <laughs> They're really? welcome to be buried in a mushroom suit. Suit. It does not say that on our website. Okay, so that's okay to do that. Yes, it is okay. okay. Now the you next mean mushrooms issue, will actually come from all the way down, six feet down? I don't know. <laughs> All we know is, sure is <laughs> it's, it's embedded in mushroom spores. Spores, and then they'll grow. I, I said, I didn't know this first I heard, so I had to ask. Well, maybe easy. that they're all shaking off in the whole process. If you don't remember on the floor. <coughs> I, 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 I read about it. <laughs> the second issue, the gentleman's been dead for two, two weeks. Mm -hmm. He's coming from Cleveland. Oh. Did, we, did we want to do this? Has he been? Isn't he? He hasn't been involved. In no, but has he been refrigerated? Yes. Yeah. It shouldn't be an issue. Okay. <coughs> I didn't know. I wasn't sure. Assuming that it's well, direct transportation that's the other thing. from the morgue to the event. They want to bring the body. They don't want to hear home involved. Somehow, somebody has to be involved. Because there's a burial for a death certificate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Do we? I mean, it's a three-hour drive. Yeah. You can warm up in three hours. Yeah. So I don't. I, I thought I had to ask when we back there. Good morning. There isn't a natural barrier area closer than Cleveland. Yeah. And I don't. I don't know why she picked us. Whether they told her or not. I don't know. I. I didn't answer. I said I had to ask. I, to to I. I don't think it's for us to tell them. To, to go somewhere else. Well, I don't either. But the technical issues of having myself transported bodies that have been well, too warm, three hours could be an issue. Yeah. But in this weather, maybe not. Uh, but isn't the issue having someone to receive the body here? Dan can't take the body off the truck and bury it, right? Well, yeah, that's what we do. That's what, that, that would be fine. You don't, you don't. Yeah, well, we place them in the lower room. I don't, you know, two weeks. But assuming they have a, a legitimate barrel permit. That's right, yeah, that's. Okay, so the truck driver has to be given they the They want to bring the body. They'll have to have some kind of paperwork that says they can transport the body. They need it. So, you know, how they work that out. get that. that thing, they've got it to have been stored that long. They had it, a death certificate, and to have transported even, well, I guess it could be in the morgue without a transit permit. Uh, are they working through any kind of memorial society or? I don't know. She just, they were going to bring the body and they didn't want, they didn't want anybody involved in it. And I said, if you're home, they didn't want to hear home involved. I, I'm, I not don't know what I'm not comfortable with it. Not either. That's why I thought I, I, I thought I had to ask. I wanted to talk to you guys about this well, before I can I, I'm willing to talk after the meeting about it. But, uh, I've done this kind of thing for the friends meeting, but I'm also ten years out of date. Uh, but let's talk after the meeting. We won't have to. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. We can go ahead. I mean, it's not a, it's not us instructing, is it? No, it's us refusing. No, I mean telling Dan what to do. Uh, yeah, it is. So you, that is, you asked a technical question. Then. I didn't want to. When a decision without uh, discussing. The yeah. other times, I mean, normally when we do a burial, there's a funeral home involved somewhere. Have we ever done any? Um, Martos from Kentucky, he brought his name, mm -hmm. but he had a permit from a funeral home that says he could transport the body so over state lines. We we're asked, not talking over state lines, we're yeah. talking two weeks dead, two weeks deceased. Mm -hmm. That's a long time. So usually we don't have, we don't even ask about a permit. But we get a, sure. good, we get a burial permit. Okay, well then if they have a burial permit. We'll have what's, to have something like What's the other issue? The condition of the body. The condition of the body. Because of the odor. Well, we, well you know, it's we probably just don't know. It's too weak. Well, uh, and, and three hours traveling down here. Yeah, I think the three hours is the bigger thing. Water. I mean, I've. I'm not sure if it looked the same as it did two weeks ago. Probably a little soft. Um, Back. The, okay, okay. the locals. <laughs> The local Quaker meeting handles our own dead, mm -hmm. and it, with current state law, things have shifted around, and we sometimes have three weeks in the morgue getting the transit permit. The, the, the paperwork is it's, it's weird. Embalmed or not embalmed? Not embalmed in a morgue. Well, I'm sure. Yeah, okay. It's the uh, right. Okay, if you want, you can do it. I just didn't know what to tell her. Uh, and I didn't want to commit to the and, and so I have moved with you know it takes you always have four people uh, I have moved bodies that have been and I just did it three weeks ago uh, that have been in the uh, morgue for three weeks this one was not even been a little longer uh, still heavy st stiff uh, but I've also driven a body that hadn't been in a morgue that was one day old or less than a day and three hours it began to smell. But that was in the summer. And it is not in a cool vehicle or anything that was designed no, to no, transport? No, it's just in a box. So you're right, condition after three hours. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, uh, I'm not comfortable doing it. It's not, I mean, it is personally I'm not comfortable doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm not comfortable for our employees mm -hmm. to be handling I really this. I really wouldn't want to handle it if we decide to. They're going to have to get the body to the lower you know. Which we generally we don't do. Yeah, that would take, because that would there's, take four people. There's liability coverage, mm -hmm. uh, all of that sort of stuff. I, I'm just just listening to Don's story though, there is a difference, I'm assuming, that the body that Don transported, that he noticed an odor after three hours, had never gotten cold. Like, this body is well, cold. It, it, it may well have gotten cold. Yeah, okay. Actually, I'm sure. In refrigerated circumstances. But not, not, for, room temperature. not for a whole day. Okay, well, <laughs> Well, then I would defer to you guys. Uh, what do we say? Uh, sorry. Yeah, I don't want to turn anybody down, but it would be circumstances for which you talked about. Mm -hmm. And they had not already bought a, a plot. Okay. Uh, there are other places. I mean, Calgary and Dayton and the, the Fox Fire in, uh, outside of Canton, but these are very expensive because uh, compared to us. And so uh, there's one in Preble County, or 
Yeah, Carl County. Uh, I can't think of the name of it, but um, it's, we're not the only we're not place in the world. Yeah, it's closer. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know the circuits where they were turned down there. I don't know. I've got a number I'll call them back mm -hmm. to say, you know, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. In my opinion, uh, Don, you <coughs> You have a, you lean anywhere? Um, well, I have to defer to Chris. Okay. Well, then let's okay, I'll let go, go ahead and say no. Okay. You know, if, if they start to give, suddenly give you information that you weren't aware of that made you think differently, uh, check with one of us. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Well, I think that's all I well, then the uh, road superintendent. I have, a, I have a couple of questions. Oh, excuse me. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sometime we need to electrify the shed. In the cemetery? Mm -hmm. Okay. I talked to the village when they cut the power for the village, mm -hmm. and they, they said they'd come and do it sometimes. Okay. And what would be nice, and I don't know, it wouldn't be the village, I don't know if we an electrician or something, but I would like to see two relatively strong lights on that pole where the juice is coming in that is pointed to the columbarium for security in the evening. Off the light pole where they get the power from. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you think about that idea? Uh, do you think they lit up all the time at night. Pardon me? They lit up at night all the time. Yeah. It's just like a, a yeah, street light, a yard light. Yeah, a photo light or something. Like Turn all the dark and off. Can we, can we be cautious about how far the light goes? Mm -hmm. Focus. Yeah, we can focus. Just the focal on the all barren area itself, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I'll talk to Dan and Jeff with the electric. Okay. So, okay. Great. Um, I, I, I guess it's probably a good idea that I update us on the um, township stimulation pro stimulation <laughs> a million times stimulus program <coughs> that's offered by the state of Ohio that we applied to um, to to resurface the roads in Glen Forest Cemetery, and we were unfortunately uh, turned down, disqualified. I guess was the technical term disqualified. Um, so uh, luckily, I, had, I was able to have a meeting with the ODOT director uh, last week, and after some discussion, uh, our application was re reactivated, uh, put back in the pot, as it were, uh, which I am very appreciative of. And, and as much as <laughs> as much as that feels like a victory, which it does on its own, he he did tell me that they had. To, had over 1,200 applications for this $8 million around the state. And the, the 1,200 applications amounted to a little over $230 million a request for $8 million availability. <laughs> and he was, he was pretty indirect about the, the, the cemeteries being, you know, at maybe not the top of what might be the priority. Yes. Prior to this. So anyway, um, you know, little victories are well. <laughs> thanks for trying. Hard game, yeah. but and know, we might be surprised. Yeah, we might be surprised. Mm -hmm. um, that's all I had. Well, I was impressed when I saw the shift in the correspondence, and I wondered what happened between <laughs> the two memos. Anything else? Nothing else on cemetery? Nope. Uh -huh. Our road, road, our road sep, uh, superintendent? I have the four guardrail folks on Brian Parker at the new place. Somebody said the guardrail order a couple weeks back. Hmm. It's closed down, so sometime soon. So this is above or below the curve? At the curve. Coming down the Three or four of them. Well, one's out and three are broke. 
So at least we know that guardrail is necessary. <laughs> it's not the first time we've had to be placed. Oh, no, it certainly isn't. Now, further uphill, when like three years ago a tree tipped, those posts are okay? Those posts are okay. Yeah, well, in fact, we replaced one of them. The other one's on, and we replaced the other row. Yeah, so sometimes they will be better. I would like to burn the pit tomorrow. Okay. okay. I think the weather's going to be fine. Just cold, yeah. I'd find the cold. Yeah. Uh, just to let you know. Yeah. That's no what I'd like to get. We've got quite a few. I don't want to put more there. It's pretty big now. Maybe we describe burning the pit is our brush. We and take and brush to a spot on Hill, Hill, Hill Road the that is a, what was it, a gravel? They have a borrow pit, they rock gravel out of it. So it's a designated burn spot. We get permission from the Township Fire Department. Okay. That's okay. the plan. Is that fine? That's the plan. That's something that's going out of there. <coughs> and I think that's... Well, in our correspondence, just want to repeat that we received a letter of appreciation for you're uh, installing a veteran's medallion. I give him a big head now. Yeah. Yeah. And you want to repeat about the uh, signage? Um, the signage, yes. The, the, sign, uh, the signage is going to be, on 343, is going to be dropped from 55 to 45, from 68 to 370. And in addition to that, we are going to install no engine brake signs on two locations uh, that already exist, those two curve signs. I've suggested to the... Is the hanger one there? Yeah, just to put them on there. Um, I haven't heard back from the ODOT guy who, who does it, but, but uh, assuming you agree with me that that's a good, those are good locations for those two signs for East and West. On 343, that's plenty of good distance from the bottom of the hill where, so they'll know before they get through. Is that what we're talking about? Where no, that we're talking about it's Swimming Pool Road. Oh, okay. That's where the signs are going? Mm -hmm. Okay. There's a, there's a curve 45 mile an right. hour sign on both sides of the road. And that's, a, that's approximately where the request was for the... The no engine brakes. For the sign, yeah. They're at the shop, the signs. Mm -hmm. They need to look at We don't hang them there. No. So this stepping down of speed uh, is similar subject that folks want to bring up about Fairfield Pike. Except this was a oh, township was a, road. A very different situation. Right? Yeah. This much more complicated situation, yes. But and still we're the lowering the speed, so they have to use their engine brakes, so we have to go outside. <laughs> well, the change of the speed is separate from the engine brakes. I know. Uh, anyway. Next time you uh, are on your personal road tour of the, the township, you might look around in the grass at uh, Houston Road and see if you can find a sign that's been down for about a month. Is it Houston? Is it I thought you said SNP, and I didn't find the old SNP. No. It's on Houston. I, so I got a call from a close to Dayton Road. highway patrol guy about SNP. I haven't erased the message. I looked, but I don't know. I didn't, and that's been a while since I was first mentioned. I didn't find the sign. I'll call it. And you took it. Yeah, so I might take it. I'll mm -hmm. just go check it out. Well, you might discover it when you're mowing. I didn't. Okay. Uh, what about the uh, uh, yeah. rebuild? We're in the, so in, the in the process of uh, specifying a replacement for the um, older of the two township dump truck plow vehicles. Mm -hmm. 2000 was it 12? 04. 04. Okay, an 04 truck. Um, and we have one we have one bid for that, and we're looking to pick up another one. Um, this would just, the bids are from the cabin chassis, not, not for any of the hydraulics, or not for 
the, the, the bed itself. This is just simply for the, for the uh, cabin chassis. And we've had one, oh, what was that? 40? 45. 45,000? Mm -hmm. 45 some change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So see what the other one from the, just to compare. Mm -hmm. yeah. So try and get another one before next meeting. Uh, it'd be nice if we could get that. Uh, if we could get that uh, officialized in, in 2021. All right, move some of that money around. And that's all I have. Anything else for the road report? Fiscal officer. <laughs> Surprises. We had a special meeting. Um, yep. <clears throat> Resolution 2021-49. Amendment of permanent appropriations. Whereas it's an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the township. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize amending the following appropriations. In the general fund, increased auditing services by $407. And I'm probably going to have to do it again because I just can't seem to let go of this audit. But anyway. Um, contracted services increased by $147. Uh, zoning, other expenses, I increased it by $208.45. Uh, cemetery fund increased contracted services by 1,443. Operating supplies in the cemetery fund increased by $177. And <clears throat> I basically created a new appropriation line in the cemetery fund to pay for some trees, to, for the trees that were planted. Um, anyway, so I created that line and then, then put money in it at $1,460. <coughs> and the fire levy fund, I uh, increased um, Medical hospitalization by four hundred dollars, the telephone appropriation by four hundred and forty-nine, operating supplies I increased it by twelve thousand dollars, and buildings I increased it by one thousand eight hundred thirteen, and Don't get excited. <laughs> it was a boo-boo. Anyway, um, EMS billing billing I increased um, the payment to our volunteers by uh, five hundred fifty-eight dollars. The Miami Township Trustees authorize the fiscal officer to do so immediately. Thank you. I move for adoption of Resolution 2149. Do I hear a second? Mm -hmm. Motion has been moved and seconded. I, I can appreciate as we approach the end of the year, uh, we can get into the, into the pennies. Mm -hmm. 208.45. Any other discussion? No. I'll call the roll. Yes, sir. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Thank you. And um, we have a um, another resolution that was uh, submitted to us by the county auditor. And this is basically uh, authorizing re resolution accepting the amounts and rates as determined by the budget commission and authorizing the necessary tax levies and certifying them to the county auditor. And this is basically setting the, um, the tax levy rate at 1.5%. And this is the levy that was passed in 2017 to raise funds to pay off the loan for this building. And what was the rate at which it was passed? When it originally was passed, mm -hmm. I believe it was at 2.4 or something three like that. Or three, I think. three, yeah, three, yeah, something like that, yeah. And, um, and um, we currently have, uh, have enough money to um, handle this, this lowering of the rate. It was, it was at this at 1.5 last year as well. But this is, re this is basically, um, just something they have to do. We have to do to keep it going. Well, we we can talk about it more if it's if it's moved and seconded. Yeah. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Do I hear a second? No second. Then. I think it's worth 
repeating what you just said about the shift from 2.3 to 1.5, when this levy was adopted, uh, a bond, to pay for a bond on constructing uh, there's an annual amount that we have to pay, and to meet that amount, when you look at the assessed value uh, in the tax base, uh, if the assessment goes up, which many of us have noticed on our property taxes, uh, that is on our property assessment, the tax goes down, so there's a static annual figure that we collect. The tax rate goes down. Yes. The, the total amount of the tax depends on this, what the change In this case, be. it's just about 280000 uh, throughout the township. It's uh, approximately 280000 which is what the, re the amount that the United States Department of Agriculture set uh, on a 30-year 30-year basis when we negotiated that at 3.25% uh, or 2.75%, I'm sorry, I don't remember that, which is substantially less than the county auditor anticipated that we would have to have on uh, a, a levy at the time. Um, it, well, they estimated we'd need 2.3 mills in order to meet a, a anticipated payment of 300 some thousand dollars and, and change yeah. for the, the loan, the bond, whatever it was. They had no idea how we were getting the money at the time. They were just anticipating that current market rates, current interest, that amount of time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, we'd be required to raise that much money in order to make those payments. <coughs> Fortunately, we, we made arrangements with the USDA for their financing at, at, at a fixed rate for 30 years at what was uh, substantially, in my opinion, under market rate at the, at the time, went down, market rate went down a little bit after that, but, but we picked it up, uh, we caught it at a, at a, at a fortuitous time uh, for us. And so, we've been collecting money at the higher rate, or we did for a couple of years, mm -hmm. and now the, the, the county auditor has reduced that amount that, that they're collecting from the general public to offset the uh, additional amount of uh, carry over carry over that we've got. Uh, so it, it, it balances that, it balances it out. Right. Um, so you're saying not, that there's a, a key factor besides what I mentioned, mm -hmm. that is uh, when we actually borrow the money for the bond, the interest rate we are paying is lower uh, than was originally projected. Oh yeah, they were projected at 5%. Mm -hmm. So that's, that may be more significant than what I was referring to. But as the tax, uh, the assessed value goes, uh, or it, as the overall base assessment goes up, the millage rate also goes down. Mm -hmm. So the, between those two factors, uh, we're paying at a lower rate than we originally voted on. Mm -hmm. But it's the same capital expenditure uh, for building the building. Well, it, yes and no. It, it, okay. In the end, it's the same capital expenditure, but on a year-to-year on a -year basis, it's less than what was projected. Yes. When the, we began. the cost of the building didn't go down, right. except for the interest component of yes. the cost yes. of the building. Uh, and this is a motion that we make each, is it every year or every couple of years? No, they'll give us, we do, do this form every year. Okay. Uh, it's been moved and seconded and discussed. Any other? No. Uh, please call the roll. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? No. Yeah. Thank you. Um, that's all I have. I have nothing for the fiscal officer. Anyone else? Anything else for the fiscal officer? <coughs> we move to the zoning inspector's report. 
Okay. Um, I've issued one permit since the last time I met with you for closing in a, a screened-in porch. Not a, not a big deal. Um, the Zoning Commission met in November, uh, made revisions to their proposed change to the PUD chapter, reflecting the input that the trustees gave them at their September meeting. Um, those revisions um, have been, or are being, whatever the right term is, circulated to the trustees to see if those changes um, are generally acceptable. The, the, the Zoning Commission doesn't want to go through the process again of having a public hearing, thinking that they had everything in line, and then having it shot down at the end. Not that there's a guarantee of that, I'm not saying anybody has to guarantee it, but to the, to the greatest extent possible, you know, making sure that we have, that they have on the errand board, um, a good package. Uh, I, so that has been sent to the trustees. I've heard back from one trustee. It would be nice to hear back from at least one more. And then the, um, the, I will inform the Zoning Commission of the results and they can decide to schedule their public hearing or, or change the, the draft yet again. Okay, so that's, that's that one. I'll just say I, I have the, no objection to the, okay. the new proposed PUD. Uh, well, I've heard from two trustees, and I think that's sufficient then to, to move ahead with the, with the process um, based on past experience. So that will be happening. Um, it's, it's been a little bit roundabout, but I'll let you know that Gary Byer, who lives um, out in um, um, Lamont Drive wants to sell two of his lots, which are vacant. They do not have houses on them. However, one of the houses has a, a nice barn on it, and potential buyers look and say, oh, can I turn that barn into a house? And I've talked to both potential buyers and to Gary and said, uh, no, because it uh, a util uh, accessory structure like a barn doesn't have any requirements for setbacks okay, in the agricultural zone, which is what Vermont Drive is, but a house does, and the barn wouldn't meet those. So I said, my, what I would encourage you to do is, is make a proposal to the Board of Zoning Appeals on the basis of there's not exactly an unusual condition about this situation. But he's proposing combining two lots, which will make a, a, a less irregular situation. In other words, all the lots out, out there were created before we even had zoning. So they're tiny little lots in a district where normally we require three acres. And that they, uh, he can also ask the BZA to say, what would a future owner be allowed to do in terms of additions to that structure? It would still be a non-conforming structure. So you might as well get all of that out of the way before you sell it. And, you know, I can never predict what the BCA will say, but I'm guessing in this situation that, that they'll be comfortable with, with those changes. But anyway, that's, that's on the horizon. I just got the actual application and, and fee, so uh, we'll be putting the BCA together whenever, during the holiday season, we can, can get people and, and take care of that one. So this will be a record year for BCA meetings? If, if, I don't think we'll get one this month. Okay. Um, I think it'll, it will be in, in 2022. Is this the barn that's been used as a residence for no, many years? No, no, it's used as a barn. Oh, okay. It's just that he no longer, um, I, don't, I don't know what Gary's motivation for selling the two lots are. Um, maybe he's just, just pulling back a little bit and doesn't, you know, doesn't feel he needs to do what he used to do with those properties. Um, I think, if my memory serves, I permitted that barn you know, within within the time that I've been the zoning inspector, it's not it's not an old dilapidated structure. It's a nice building, and I think that's why people look at it and say, "Oh, you know, let's let's convert it," as opposed to it's kind of in the way you know, mm -hmm. of building a house on the on the lot. Any idea what the water table is in that general neck of the woods? Well, I mean, what's amazing to me that on those little tiny lots in spite of all the trouble we have with drainage issues and the swales around those, the, 
people, septic systems seem to function, and they've been repaired and under you know appropriate authority of, the, of Green County and everything, mm -hmm. and and apparently you know that that someone making a house on this will be able to get a septic system. I I don't have anything to say mm -hmm. about that, but based on every other lot, then they can probably do it. Um, you know, and that's although we. I mean, I don't know if we actually have it written in so many words in the code, but essentially we don't issue a permit if they haven't gotten the permit from the health department. It's, it's kind of ridiculous to issue a permit for a building that would be illegal if it were built. So we, we coordinate in that respect. Mostly I tell people, you know, you should get your septic permit first because the health department may tell you that you have to put the leach field where you want to put your house. So you don't want to pick the site for the house until you guarantee that you can put in the, the appropriate septic system. Um, and in this case, it will be two lots combined, so there's twice as much area as everybody else out there in their homes have receptive systems. Um, but I, you know, I say, yes, it's a little bit amazing I mean, that, that, that it all works. Um, I don't know if everybody here remembers when a cross fair crew pipe from Lamont and Carroll, there was some developing going on. And the Soil and Water Conservation Service came in and said, we don't recommend, <laughs> you know, allowing this to even be built upon. And, and uh, folks bought the land, and, and we all had memories of, oh, I remember that farm field being completely underwater. You know, how could you have a... But they got permits from the health department. And, and, and they mounted the, where the house is, and it's still underwater when it rains a lot. A lot. So I, I don't know, but anyway, that, that is happening. Um, I would, I don't know how, what quite the right way to put this. Um, so Jim Shattuck more or less moved what was at the former gas station in Yellow Springs out to his property on the corner of, of South River and Inkling, much to the annoyance of many of his neighbors um, and even for people further away. It's a, it's a very visible spot. I told Jim at the, at, after hearing these, all these comments at the beginning of the summer that he needed to do something about it, that it, and what he had had out in his yard, invisible, qualified as junk by our definition, and we do not allow to have junk yards. I said, you could enclose it all. You know, you're, you're welcome to have it inside a building, uh, but you can't with it the way it is. And, and his response to me was, well, I can't just do something overnight and I'll have it taken care of by September. Well, it hasn't been taken care of by September. Right? Now, that's the first bit of history. The second bit of history was that this same song and dance more or less went on with the village for years, okay? Um, and it was, the village was not able to completely solve the problem. They made advances on it. And that was more Jim's father than, than Jim, it's two different people. But I don't have a lot of reason to believe that if I go out and go, go through the formal procedure or <coughs> issue a zoning citation, that will make a whole lot of difference. But I will go through that process if that is appropriate. But we do have, we being the township, another choice, which is the township has a nuisance order. And so I'm presenting to the trustees, are you interested or willing to go through the nuisance ordinance procedure, um, either as, as the place to start, as opposed to trying to do it through zoning, or as you know, a, a little bit of a stick when I go out and say, you know, you're, you're violating the zoning, and if it's not taken care of by such and such a time, then it will come before the trustees to, you know, to go through that process. Mm -hmm. so, and I don't, you don't have to answer me tonight, but it's something that I would like you to think about because I don't want to waste the township's time and energy in, in something that may not bear any fruit. But as I say, I will... And speaking from experience. Speaking from experience, yes, in, in more than one situation. <coughs> well, I'll think about it. Okay. Yeah, just, um, you know, we're, we're all living with it as it stands now, and um, you know, we're 
they're all a little bit for another month or two. But uh, I think we, I think there there are enough people that are that are bothered to to pursue it if we can. The bottom line being, we have the legal authority to go onto the premises and remove everything that that we feel is qualified as junk, which is that is it. That's it. If we work through the what you, you're saying, the ordinance, the nuisance ordinance, right, the nuisance ordinance, nuisance ordinance. Mm -hmm. uh, other than any automobiles that qualify as uh, yeah, there, there are specific operational, that's right. operational or collector's items, or you know, there are some exceptions. Uh, it's uh, it's a little involved. It's a little cumbersome. Uh, I'm sure it can get to the place where it's not pleasant, but it is what it is what it is. And if we have somebody who is unwilling to remove material that we find unsightly, we have the ability to to go and do it at our expense. Now we put that on their tax bill, but. <clears throat> well, when you brought this up, you said you would like us to think about it. You well, I mean, I, you know, Chris is familiar with this process. Don is not familiar with this mm -hmm. process. You may want to pull out the, the actual ordinance and refresh your, your mind about what's involved. Um, and you may say, well, you know, go ahead with the, with the zoning procedure and, and see what happens. And, and I will. Um, I just know that, it, that it's, if I were a gambling man, I wouldn't bet on that solving the problem. Good, goodwill hasn't worked, and, uh, and zoning threats aren't particularly heavy. If, if the courts in Xenia don't, don't see it as particularly important, given all the different things they have to deal with, it doesn't tend to rise to the top of the class. So that's, that's based on just talking to zoning inspectors across the, the county. It's, it's not an uncommon problem. We we're actually have a lot less of it to deal with than, than many other places do. It's, it's not an easy problem, but it apparently is one that, you know, unlike many, let's call them minor zoning violations, this one gets a lot of people working on. Whereas others, you know, you, you, you work it out with your neighbors or, or or I work it out with you, or whatever, and, and that's that. So I'm just trying to, to be as practical as possible. I appreciate that. It's, can, can we say to be continued? As you wish. Um, one, one other thing, since I probably won't meet with you again this year, and then when we have the first meeting of the year, it's always the time to decide if, if any of the zoning fees need to be changed. Um, I'm considering some kind of language that, that indicates that we can bill um, applicants to the Board of Zoning Appeals for expenses above and beyond the normal advertising and whatever, in other words, if, you know, like we had a situation where, where it was recommended by the county prosecutor to have um, a stenographer at the meeting. Well, that was a, a very large expense, but it was incurred, at, you know, by the, the nature of the, of the request. And, and we have to decide whether those are the kinds of things that just go into our budget or whether they somehow should be covered by the applicant. Um, I've checked and it seems our our costs of advertising the newspaper haven't changed significantly. We're still doing all right there. Inflation hasn't eaten away. And, and I've always been fond of the idea that, that the fee for a BZA hearing is not exorbitant. If someone you know, feels they have a legitimate concern, that they're not turned away because, oh, I can't afford to argue my case. But, um, but we have people, you know, uh, doing a lot more than just sitting down with the BZA and, and discussing an issue these days. 
But if you add a $1,200 transcription fee, a stenographer fee, on top of it, that would tend to uh, keep people from feeling comfortable using you know, that, that yeah. part of So the question is, on something like that, gotcha. maybe it's, it's split. It's not, you know, it's half our cost and it's half their cost. But, and, you know, it wasn't something that, in, in that case, it wasn't an arbitrary decision, in a sense, by the, the Board of Zoning Appeals or, or by the township. It was recommended by the legal council. Um, if it had been recommended by them, I don't think it whatever would have happened. It wasn't, you know, it hadn't crossed my mind. But, um, and, you know, it was, it was encouraged by the person coming in front of the BZA. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know, it's, it's something to think about. That's why I brought it up today. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I don't know, I may, may you know, take a look at the other fees, but most of the time, nothing has you know, had a significant change. What does state law say about our options? I believe we're allowed to well, I don't know if there's yeah, a, we should, actually we spelled out sure. or not. I can't remember whether I've heard that, you know, reason or not. I know that they are certainly different from place to place. It's not a, a fixed amount across right. the state. Um, I think we're free to set the amount, but I couldn't quote chapter. I mean, I can tell you that our, <coughs> most of our zoning fees, not all of them, haven't changed in 20 years. So if you just take inflation into account, they're getting to be more and more of a bargain. But well, that's important or not, I don't know. I was just thinking, do we, do we want to say $1,200 for every no. hearing? And we don't, and I don't, I mean, maybe 2019 and 2020 were just a very unusual time, okay? We had far more hearings than ever before. <laughs> they took far more time and effort and, and people involved. And if we go back to having BZA hearings where there are a few BZA members and a couple of people coming into the room asking for their request and we solve it in a half an hour, then there doesn't need to be any change. But if we continue to have, have people hiring lawyers and coming in and, and you know, I mean, I've spent days, not hours, days on, on preparing for the, the boys on the field. Getting hundreds of communications that I have to relay. It's, it's a very different process um, than it has been in the past. We, like the you just have to think about whether that's still part of the, just the service we provide. You know, you could say there shouldn't be any fees for any of this. Zoning is a, is a service that the township provides, and why should anybody have to, to pay anything for it? Why should only the people that have, you know, questions with the code have to pay something, and, and everybody else doesn't? But there's a very strong tradition of, of charging nominal fees, and, and we do that. I mean, our, our cost for, for a zoning permit, even with the percentage of the cost of the project, are still far lower than most communities. So we're, we're not, um, I don't think, taxing our community in any way. But it's this particular um, nature of, uh, it isn't exactly litigation, but uh, it has you know, changed the perspective on this. Maybe it's something I can do a little research on. Um, you know, it's just the question of whether you know, maybe in January we indicate that, that there's, you know, some kind of option after further research to make the change so we don't have to wait a whole other year. Um, I didn't really start thinking about this, obviously, until relatively the last minute. And I thought, oops, you know, it's coming up when this has to be dealt with. And I haven't nailed anything down or, or done the research. But I can do a certain amount of research between now and then see how other other communities are dealing with it, which is, you know, common common way to stop it. Thank you.
Just one other thing I want to mention, and it's, I don't think this is a big one. Um, we've had now at least two people that I've become aware of of uh, renting camping spaces on their property, which is a commercial activity that's not included under our agricultural zone. And in both cases, I've asked the people to stop explaining why, and to the best of my knowledge, they have. So it hasn't been controversy. But there is a, a website, just like you have Airbnb, there's, you know, Camping B&B, I don't know what the actual name of it is. And there are people all over the area running out camping sites. I mean, outside of Miami Township. I just know of two because of going to that site after initially hearing from the neighbor, the campfires in the woods next door, and you know, is that a fire hazard, and, and so forth and so on. So, um, just keeping up to date on sort of the latest new, new developments and the uses, uses in the township. Any questions? I have none. I do want to mention that Richard and I spent a, oh, that's uh, right. a, a, a good amount of time this morning with uh, our friends from Agraria, uh, just kind of going over who's doing what and what the reaction to that might be and what potentially could be happening in the future. And uh, they were scheduled to be here tonight, and there was a mix up and for another reason, actually, for just just kind of an update uh, on, on where they are. But um, uh, as I say, there was a mix up, so they're not here. But um, how would you, how would you uh, assess the time that you spent there this morning with them? Productive, not productive? Uh, oh, uh, definitely productive. How productive is a little harder to tell. I think what was, was different was that the, the chair of their board was there and um, she seemed to be a little bit more <coughs> understanding of, of some of the township's concerns as well as learning about them in the, in the first place. Um, and I think that, that that may be helpful. The, um, there, I think we're still having some difficulty having everybody speaking the same language. Um, you know, there's there's big differences about what what somebody heard somebody say, or thinks they heard somebody say, and, and what was said, or what the actual law or rule is. Um, and. I think we'll, we'll continue to try to, to be as clear as possible on those issues. Um, and there was an honest, I think, honest statement that the saying that we are trying to push the limits. Okay. That is yeah, very, very acknowledging. Mm -hmm. uh, So that, you know, and, and uh, Gray is not the only property owner who has, has operated on that basis. Um, they acknowledge one of the things that makes it dealing with them a little more complicated is that most of the time I talk to the property owner. Well, there is no property owner. There's a corporation that, that owns that property. And so it, it is a little more difficult to, to just sit down and have a, a conversation about it and solve it in, in the conversation. So that's another area where we're working on, on strategy of, of how to communicate and discuss when there's, not when there's an issue. As I said, my goal is to try to discuss these things before it becomes an issue, not afterwards. But we haven't worked out exactly how to go about that. When? I'm, I'm, I, I actually know the answer to this, but for the public, when did you first meet with folks in Agraria? Oh, shortly after they acquired the property. So that's... 2017, I think. We, we early, or spring? 
I, I don't remember the, the date. I mean, these, you know, this was, this was at their request. They wanted to learn about, I mean, you know, we, we told some stories. Chris told one, I told one about, you know, when, when that property was first acquired, there were all kinds of ideas floating around about what they were going to do, what they could do. You mean in 2017? Yeah. Because there were certainly a lot. Oh, there's when, been all kinds when, of ideas all along. When, who's the guy, the family who sold it? Arnovitz. When Arnovitz bought it, he was going to develop it all. Well, uh, so well, that was many, many years I know, but I'm saying there have, been, there have been issues about that property historically. Oh, well, it's not, well, I mean, but yeah, I, that we don't need to go into that, that area. But anyway, so the, the point is that there has, there has been a learning curve if you want to call it that, all along. That the, whether it's the board or the director or the staff have had to learn about what they can do and can't do. And it isn't just in terms of zoning, it's been in terms of the building department and building regulations, it's been in terms of the health department, it's been in terms of the, the state of Ohio on, on certain things. And um, it's, it's, a, it's a much more complicated endeavor I think than, than people realize to to do the program that that Agrary attempts to do, and we don't have convenient precedent for that. We we are walking along. We talked about the fact that you know anything that ends up falling under agritourism gets very difficult to work with. We have you know a zoning code this thick that members of the township community are the authors of it, okay? And so they can look at it when there's a question and say, oh, this is what we intended or didn't intend, or we can rewrite it or change it. When the agritourism comes up, the state put that in our books and didn't give us any authority to modify it, clarify it, any, anything like that. So there's going to be a constant challenge in, in interpreting and enforcing those laws. But our conversation today was not merely about agritourism. It was about many other things. A, a composting facility that they've been trying to get off the ground for some time is maybe coming to fruition. The, the um, work by the Soil and Conservation Service to, I'm going to use my word, I can't think of, there's this rebuild Jacoby Creek is anticipated to start sometime next year, which is two, two million dollars. You know, it's just two million dollars of earth moving going on. Um, so it's gonna, there's going to be an impact in that neighborhood if it's just the traffic from the, all the trucks moving around. Uh, so there, you know, there are all kinds of different things, but that, that work that's being done um, on Jacoby Creek has absolutely nothing to do with the township and zone. Correct? And sorting those things out you know, is, is I think, some, sometimes a challenge. In other words, Chris and I got asked questions today about things that didn't have anything to do with Miami Township, and we had to explain why they did or didn't. And, and that's what I'm talking about, about this education that, that needs to, to continue to take place. And uh, the hardest thing is, is when you start doing something and you invest a lot of time and energy into it before you find out that it was inappropriate. And that's that's what I've been trying to avoid all along. It's just not getting in that position. Well, thanks for adding background. You're welcome. Anyone else? No. Uh, we have before we move to number 11. <laughs> yes. I'm going to back up to number 10. Yes, and you mean standing committee reports? Yes, but under that umbrella, I'd like to um, uh, move to executive session for purposes of real estate. Huh? <laughs> I Are there standing committee reports? Well, it, it just that this, it's the real estate is somehow under yeah. committee reports. Right. Oh, okay. Uh, it's, it's just this is the place where it's appropriate. Okay. Um, 
Uh, there's a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of... We have a state. Um, looking at folks that I assured would be a, be a short meeting. Um, yeah. well, I, I am more than I wonder happy if we could to defer to our guests. Work with them first. And Certainly. Then. I'm all right. I'm along for the ride. You're, you're good. Well, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. You don't have any choice in that. Oh. My husband's waiting for dinner. Go, go okay. ahead, do your thing. Yeah. Okay. Who, somebody's going to say. There's been a motion to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing real estate. Uh, do I hear a second? Please call the roll. Mr. Crockett? Yeah. Mr. Mucher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Okay. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Let's wait a minute. We return from executive session. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's no no report to be made. Uh, new business. Well, is there any old business? No. I do. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. I'll make it quick. So let's do the old business now. Yes. Okay. So I just wanted to thank you guys for the resolution that you guys did uh, regarding the Kingwood project um, because it, to me personally, it proves that you've been listening. Um, we've had a lot of you've had a lot of constituents over the course of the last what, year or two now um, who have had varying opinions but primarily in opposition to Kingwood um, and that has been demonstrated quite significantly in the county's town hall, um, in the NPSB's public hearing, uh, and in many other settings um, and I just appreciate you guys for listening um, and having the courage to stand behind um, the majority of our constituents. That's it. Yeah, good job. Yeah. Sure. You guys. Oh. And, yes. yeah, <laughs> and since you did that, we were, while the public hearing was happening at the fairgrounds, where there were over 300 people, I think, oh, that's it right. was, yeah. that, that was gesture was not, un, uh, yeah, it was an interesting evening. For people who keep their eyes open until midnight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Ma Marilyn Moyer said she counted 400, but. Uh, and she could well have been uh, right. It was in the. The range of people who were there, I mean, people with kids and older people and everybody in between, it was really fascinating. Jennifer, what's your take on what they throwing around this settlement? Yes. So I'm not, I'm obviously not a lawyer, so I would lean on your lawyer to figure out the best way to approach that. Um, but it sounds to me that discussions are part of what the OPSB, it's either an official part of the OPSB process behind the scenes or they encourage the developers to try and work with the various parties. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what that is. Um, I do not know if stipulations are a part of that. I think they are. Mm -hmm. But again, I, I, that's that part of it is so legally slanted that I get a little uncomfortable um, and truly understanding where the pitfalls are and where they aren't in that whole in that whole arena. Um, I, I have been told that um, even though uh, there's an attempt for stipulations and stipulations always sound nice but I've been cautioned that you have to be careful with stipulations because some of them come with the requirement to um, then no longer oppose the development or say you approve of the development mm -hmm. if these stipulations are met. Yeah. Um, so I've heard a lot of varying degrees of, of caution. Um, <coughs> but um, yeah, I'll, I'll try to separate my personal opinion from all of that. But um, I think those are supposed to happen, and that's part of the reason, right, that the hearings were delayed, was so yeah. that they could have these discussions. We, we have not. Said it in a, in well, the intervening hearings haven't. The 
I'm happy to oh, schedule. Uh, for they are next, not happening on Yeah, the scheduled <laughs> December 13 Power Signing Board uh, hearing will be continued. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know that terminology. And uh, the date that they speculate will be continued to would be pushing into February. Uh, although that's not settled. And, and we'll, we'll hear that on the 13th. Yeah. We'll either hear it on the 13th or they'll agree to determine that at a later date. Mm -hmm. But it's my understanding that we don't have to be involved. Like I, I personally don't have to be there for that. I'm not Jackson. Well, our our attorney needs to be. Yes. Just, uh, Correct. Yeah. Uh, when did you first hear about uh, people leasing, signing leases, or being approached by leases? Three years ago. Yeah. It, it, I mean, I wasn't. I didn't have my ear closer to the ground than anybody, probably the same time that, that, that you guys knew about it. I, you know, it wasn't like I had a conversation with Lamar Franklin and he said, oh, you know, I've been approached by, you know, and I learned about that sooner than, than somebody else. But you else. sent a letter to the state or something asking, what, hey, we... Oh, I, I started out by learning about what the Power Siding Board was and what their they were responsible doing and what the process was because I, you know, I said, you know, it's quite clear that this is contrary to township zoning, but I'm fairly sure that we don't have any say in the matter. And that, so I did that, that research. Um, and then we had somebody from the Farm Bureau come. Mm -hmm. That was two Oh, years just to ago. explain to us in general about the process. And I remember that trustee meeting and, <coughs> and they're talking about, well, you know, these tend to get granted, but you can often negotiate, you know, things that, that make them less painful. You can negotiate setbacks or, or you know, other amenities kind of thing. And that was, that was the advice that I heard from, from the Farm Bureau representative. Anyway, 2017 is certainly a date that the county um, recognizes as a recording of uh, uh, one of the early leases. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean there were not discussions and negotiations with landowners before 2017, but I've personally seen documentation from the recorder's office mm -hmm. acknowledging mm -hmm. leases signed as early as 2017. I, I do have one piece of information, and it's, I mean, it's a reliable source, but it's still just word of mouth which is there are other companies out soliciting leases now. That was something I was going to try and bring up, but maybe a new business that kind of tails into Senate Bill 52 and, and that, so I don't know where you'd like me to talk about that. I uh, should have mentioned it earlier. Of course. Conscious of time, uh, but yeah. I, I heard from Brian, Brandon Huddleston with the county that similar information that okay. uh, this is coming up again. Two companies uh, are soliciting in the area. So the, the results of Senate, the, what, what the townships and the county do with that, um, I guess I'm curious whether that is in play, whether you guys are starting to consider any of that, um, just because the that area is, is being solicited. Requesting the county to name Miami Township as, what's the phrase, a exclusionary, exclusionary zone. zone would or pay our price if, if the case where it goes in, in. They've already taken a public This is separate. Pledge. It's completely an separate from King of the Food yeah. Zone. I'm just wondering if there are discussions being had. If we haven't had plan been, that it, we, If there were discussions, they would be in this meeting. All right. Yeah. Uh, and I just want to repeat that the Power Siding Board staff has recommended to power siding board that the Kingwood proposal not be uh, even in a modified form uh, not be adopted but we don't know what will happen that may be why Vesper Kingwood requested a <coughs> continuance um, I have one question just because I went to that public hearing that served 
for having two members of the siding board there sitting just a formality. They didn't ever ask a question, a clarification, uh, anything. We, I can tell you that um, Teresa White, who is um, uh, the head of the power siding board now, uh, she has been making an effort to... Jennifer French. Oh, excuse me. Yes, Jennifer French. I'm sorry, Jennifer French, not Teresa White. Jennifer French, who had the curly mm -hmm. hair, uh, dark curly hair, yes, yeah, she's been, since she was appointed last spring, she's made a point to go to the public hearings and be there. And I've been to uh, another one, she didn't say a thing, but she sat okay, in the same place, paid attention. Okay. Mary Mertz, the head of ODNR, was also there, and uh, her appearance was somewhat unusual. Oh, she okay. does not typically. She's a voting member of the board, mm -hmm. and voting members of the board who represent heads of other agencies do not typically go to the public hearings. At least the ones we've observed. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, I realize so, that you're not experts in, in all right. of this, but. But she's from the area. Um, no, the I just trying to understand area. if there was going to be this huge verbatim transcript, and that would anybody ever look at it? Or there, well, there is a transcript that comes out. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. But it, it, five it's, hours, I mean, I can't right. imagine what that bill is going to be or how long it's going to take that gal to... No, we don't have to pay for that one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, what may be very interesting to you when it's done, I'm hoping it'll be word searchable. Yeah. So, uh, and I sat through the whole, the whole thing to the bitter end. And I made a note to myself, oh my gosh, when this gets transcribed, word search it. So you could say Miami Township, you could say Glen Helen. I mean, the specifics that people mentioned, the 70 some people who testified, um, would be searchable, should be searchable. So every time somebody mentioned John Bryan, mm -hmm. Glen Helen, Clifton Gorge, Camp most Clifton. of these things, Camp Clifton, mm -hmm. uh, people even mentioned the Boy Scout camp, and somebody talked about um, going to Camp Green as a Girl Scout. Uh, so that would be rather interesting to pull those up. Well, I repeat, it's been a, it, on our agendas <coughs> two years. Oh yeah, yeah, at least, at least two years. That is publicly in our meetings. Uh, may I move to new business? Okay. I'm sorry. I don't to, know why you're asking me. <laughs> well, are we done with this? Yeah. yeah, but thank you. Thanks for thanks for thanking us, uh, and thanks for sitting through our whole meeting. Uh, Besides the National Opioid Settlement Agreement Resolution, I also want to review the time of our first meeting in January. But shall we? Uh, where's my copy of? I've hidden my, here it is. Uh, we have been asked by, it is brought to our attention by the county prosecutor's office uh, that the uh, Ohio and the, uh, there's a lawsuit against Johnson and Johnson, Jansen and the Johnson and Johnson companies regarding uh, opioid uh, medical or pharmaceutical uh, sales. And there's a proposed settlement for the state of Ohio uh, that requires 95% of <coughs> local governments to participate if, if the settlement is going to stand. Uh, and they've suggested, the county has suggested, uh, a resolution which we've numbered 2021-51, and the summary statement is this would be an emergency resolution to accept the material terms of the One Ohio Subdivision Settlement 
pursuant to the Ohio Memorandum of Understanding and Consent with the terms of the July 21, 2021 National Opioid Settlement Agreement. And then there's sort of legal jargon. We've been shown copies. I would entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Do I hear a second? Um, second. Uh, there will be, if this goes through, some financial uh, route to a uh, pocket that will be packet that will be given to the township, but we don't know what magnitude. The state has just agreed to distribute the settlement yeah. in local jurisdictions. Uh, <clears throat> any other discussion? Uh, we'll call the roll, please. Sure. Mr. Crockett? Again. Mr. Hollister? <coughs> yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Resolution passes. Then we can in January, our first meeting would normally be the first Monday, which would be the Monday after New Year's weekend, January 3rd. Uh, it's not a holiday, but I would like us to uh, for some consider, <laughs> I would like us to consider uh, moving our first meeting of the year to the Wednesday, January 5th. We're playing a really big party. Uh, I would be returning from a family event by car, and I don't know what the weather will do, and that kind of thing. It's fine with me. Do, we, do I just declare that, or do we need a motion? We declare it. Well, we have another meeting in December, and if I hear any objections, I'll uh, confirm all this uh, when we meet on December 20th. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll need to let the Yellow Springs News know, know and uh, post it. Oh, yeah. <coughs> but we have one more meeting this year, just putting it on our radar. <coughs> any other business? I have one item. Uh, I'd like to move that we uh, continue the tradition of gift cards for our zoning commission and uh, again this year due to their extra work uh, for zoning appeal. And those have been $100? 100 for the zoning commission, 50 for the uh, zoning commission. Or mm -hmm. BZA, I'm sorry, BZA. As we did last year. Is that a motion? That is a motion. Do I hear a second? I'll say mm -hmm. Discussion? <clears throat> Call the roll, please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Well, this has been a jam packed evening. <laughs> Thank you all. I move for adjournment. <laughs> Sooner rather than later. Do I hear a second on the motion to adjourn? I uh, second that. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you.